Intel CPU crashes. What you need to know. Mm. Intel explains the root cause and plans a final microcode fix for 13, 14 gen CPUs, which apparently has kind of fixed it, right? Is is that what we are not hearing or hearing? Is that what what, well, are, what are the videos saying? So they quote fixed it or did they? Right. So like I the third or fourth firmware update they've pushed. I think it's the third one that they've pushed for the same issue. So and every time they've said they've quote fixed it. Yeah. Right. And, this is not the first time that they said they fixed it. And so at this point for 13th gen is is already out the door and done with. 14th gen is is pretty much done with. They're announcing 15th gen like later in October. Um and they're not they're not calling it 15th gen, they're calling it core ultra or whatever. But um my question is is it like the same archetype that no it's a completely new architecture okay so it if, so, if so you my were... question is 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 anyone going to buy a flawed product at this point like their remaining stock uh if you're aware of the issue why would you buy it and two if you're not aware of the issue then, like, you know, most people are just going to buy it because it's what Best Buy offers them or it's embedded in some laptop and there's not a lot of good choices there other than Intel. Um, and they're, they're just going to be blissfully ignorant and be like, no, it's fine. My computer's running fine. You know, they're not going to understand that they could be running at a performance loss and, and not even realize it because they may think all computers just get slow over time. Right, so my I, I wanted to, I want to take a look at this issue from the the stance of the entire company itself. They've lost a lot of money on this issue. They're basically setting money on fire with their foundry business, right? Like their foundry business is not. Um, so here on Tech Power Up, you even have. Uh, I know something that you've mentioned before is like some of the top posts, most recent posts about the possible of this fix. And obviously it's going to take a little bit of time. People are still going to have to test and figure it out over the long term. Sure. But you know, this, some of these top posts are like, Nope, I don't believe Intel at all. Reputation has already been damaged. Yeah. And, and that, I mean, that's, that is, and those are the people, right. That are, that you are directly like working with, not like your casual or, or anybody yeah, it like it is in the enthusiast market. It is not going to hurt them. This generation where it's really going to hurt them is next generation with the core ultra CPUs and people going, Oh yeah, I heard about that thing a couple of months ago. I don't want that. I'm going to buy something else. So a lot of, pre-built sales may see AMD on the uptick more and people who are building PCs are definitely going to see AMD on the uptick more. Yeah. Um, as far as what's offered from like larger OEMs like Dell and stuff like that, they're probably going to sell a lot of Intel products. Oh, they probably got to move inventory and they probably have longer term contracts. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. The, um, so there's, there's a lot of like, I, I've been talking a lot about retail, right? Um, but what we haven't talked about like is large businesses. Mm -hmm. So when somebody like my former employee, Fidelity Investments, goes and says, I'm going to buy, 80,000 of these desktops and 20,000 of these laptops. If someone in the purchasing position is aware of this issue, they're going to take that into consideration. And it takes a lot of consumers to make up for one choice like that from a purchasing manager at a very, very large company. You know, 
Um, and there may, there may still be reasons to choose Intel. Um, but people are not going to want to deal with switching out chips in individual workstations, right? So I think in the last stream, we talked about how these game companies were having data center guys go and pull the server and switch out the processor to fix the issue. They were doing it like fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have like guys who just have workstation grade computers with high end processors in them, you don't want your help desk guys running around switching out processors. No, that that's time consuming. So, you know, on, on the large scale business side of it, if purchasing managers are aware of it, do they care enough to deal with it or are they going to go with AMD? And on the gaming enthusiast side of it, people are definitely shifting more towards AMD. On the video game server side of it, they're definitely shifting more towards AMD because they don't want the downtime in the issues. Right. Um, and then on the business side of it, Intel's losing a lot of money replacing product. Mm hmm so that kind of brings me back around to my first point like how is intel as a business like i wonder what their internal figures are for their revenue loss based off of having to replace product what right. their margins are like for these last two generations if they're because it's definitely affected their stock price um and the amount of money that they're spending on the foundry side of it at the same time is enough to really make Intel as a, as a large company have serious financial issues, you know? Right. I think Intel is too big to fail. And I think that the government mm. values the foundries enough here in the U.S. that they would give Intel a bailout, kind of like they gave GM a bailout back in 2008. <sighs> that was a very hmm. interesting reaction. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, the finance side, man, I understand that side. I don't. I don't know if the government would bail them out um, per se because they would eventually just fall in value so much. Like they wouldn't. They're not going to go anywhere. They're. They might fall in value enough to where somebody does buy them up but it's not like they, they, they I don't think there's any need to give them a bailout I mean I, I know what you're saying like but they're not they're not going away there's still I, too much value there I think if they were just making processors that would be one thing but because of the foundry side of it with being a stateside chip maker as opposed to having to make those chips in China and then send them back here um, with the geopolitical tensions. I think that the foundry side of it is almost worth more than Intel as a, as a whole company. Because um, think about it. If, if we went to war, right. And, and this is large theoretical, not, not bringing anything else into it. But if we went to war, the government, could do what they did in the 40s and tell individual factories to make whatever they need. They could look at Intel and be like, all right, you're making missile guidance chips now, as opposed to having to send that over to TSMC or whoever. And that is an invaluable asset to have in the States. Yeah, I don't, I mean, their foundry business, all the stuff that Intel does is not going away. Like, they just might. They, I don't. They won't get a bailout either. They'll just. They'll get bought out, if it winds up getting that bad. But honestly, it's still pretty far away. They still make a lot of money, dude. They are still. They still are generating, you know, about shoot twelve point eight or so billion dollars in revenue a quarter roughly about that so about 13 billion a quarter and i mean they're they're still 
like relatively positive earnings around the zero line on positive earnings. So like they'll be okay. It's not like <laughs> they're not they're not going away. The thing so the question I have, I guess, is you said they're about to go to a new architecture. Does that mean that they are about to move past this 13, 14th gen architecture and it's going to be completely new to where you don't have to worry about this? Yes. So the 12th gen, 13th gen. Right, 12th, 13th, 14th. And 14th gen. Right. Are all basically the same design of chip with incremental improvements on the chip. Right. And different power voltages to make the chip perform better. So um, think of it like if you are, you're making your car, right? And then you you reprogram the, the chip that controls the airflow into the engine and all of a sudden you get a performance boost because you're allowing more air into the engine. And so your, your chip is, or your car is going faster. Right. Right. So when they go to do a generation, then they'll they'll change some of this stuff, and then it's all that's why it's all compatible with the same motherboards, and um, a lot of it is just really really minor enhancements over time to the chips. Right. Um, yeah. Even Jose said. He uh, he went away from Intel pretty quick. He's uh he's on AMD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so I have a 12th gen chip in my computer, and I could wait till they came out with 15th gen and then drop like you know two or three hundred dollars to buy a processor to just pull the 12th gen chip out and put the 14th gen chip in and then maybe get a 30% performance uplift from it. Mm -hmm. But do I trust that chip to last another five years like that? I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I know the 12th gen chip will. Mm -hmm. I don't know that the 14th gen, gen chip will. So then, then the consumer has to do this like calculation of, okay, well, if I only get a year out of it, it's $300 worth a year. And that's a terrible, that's terrible math to have to do as a consumer. Intel doesn't even have a way, they haven't even released a utility yet to run on your computer to tell if your chip is damaged. You just right. have to send it into RMA and then they will analyze it and tell you. And there was a story that came out earlier saying they had to do them all by hand. They had to hand analyze the chips. There's no automated way to do it. Right. That's that seems uh, like that will probably not be the case going forward. <laughs> it seems like that they will find a way to some way check chips. Like, I don't, I mean, and I don't know if they can, but I'd imagine they're probably going to find a way because, I mean, the the fact that this issue went on for over three years of this architecture data chipset is, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty costly dude as, uh, for brand reputation because Intel, which used to be like the King Kong in, in this space 20 years ago is, I mean, they still are. No, dude, not really, man. They're slowly becoming... 90% of all laptops are Intel. Okay, I, go, that, go and, that's, and that's and fine. And find an AMD laptop. Can't but be. I'm talking about brand uh, value. And I'd imagine there's a lot of people not sitting high on brand value with AMD or, or Intel right now. So... Which eventually leads over to actual sales so it, you know it's it's interesting because it's like there are some brands that are so big that you may not even really know who their main competition is there there's a lot of consumers 
that for the last 10 years have been trained to think Intel Core i3, i5, i7. And maybe if they're really up on it, they know what an i9 is, right? <laughs> and if you ask a lot of those consumers, well, if you're not, if you don't buy Intel, who would you buy? I don't think they could answer. I think a lot of those consumers that... They just buy whatever their their little grandson Jimmy tells them to buy. I uh, true. Uh, I don't. I don't think consumers pay that close attention. Like if you if you have no idea what i three i five i six i six i seven is, like you most likely don't give a crap. And then once you have an issue with said computer, um. You might have, you might ask a tech guy, like, what is going on? Why is my computer crappy? And then you might get an answer. And if you get that answer and they say, oh, yeah, you have an Intel processor, Intel processors are crap. Oh, well, where do I go if it's not, if I can't use, if I don't use Intel? Or what should I look out for in laptops? Or what should I look out for in uh, desktops? And they say, yeah. Buy AMD. Just get an AMD. I think the answer would be maybe you should buy a Mac before they even realize that AMD is a brand name in the mix. Um, Mac, I, I mean, Mac I could also is see a that. More recognizable brand than AMD is. Um, Jose brought up an interesting point in chat a few minutes ago. I don't know if you saw it, but he said that yeah. almost all government computers. Are yeah. Tall. Yeah, I know. Think That's about all that. the size of all the computers. In all the military bases, on the ships, on the subs, they're probably all Intel. And now they may not all be 12th gen or newer. Oh, yeah. No way. <laughs> government have latest tech in anything? Well, no freaking way. 12th gen came out in 2020. So let's let's put that in perspective, right? So they're not 12th no. gen. They're very old <laughs> computers and will probably be replaced soon. Um, unless it's like, you know, critical server infrastructure that they just can't get rid of. Yeah. But yeah, like I don't, I don't end user level get replaced fairly often. Right. I, um, I don't know. <sighs> I mean, Intel's not going to go anywhere, but and obviously they do have a big deep pocket with the government and it's not just the U S government, it's many governments. So obviously they do have pretty solid base there. And, but the government could also say, dude, quit fucking up or we're just going to ax our contract. Yeah. It's uh, I don't, I don't know that Apple or AMD could even produce on the scale that Intel does. Because AMD is still fairly small. Compared they are. To yeah, no, they are. Um, so but I, I can guarantee you one like, thing. AMD, of if... Half a million computers. If, I don't know they'd be able if to they make. started getting some of those government contracts, absolutely they could uh, expand and... It might take them a couple of years to do it, but they would do it. And that's not to say that there's not any AMD deployed anywhere inside of government facility, but it's a very, very small one. Right. Um, it's, pro it's probably for very specific uh, computer cases. cases. Yeah. 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 I was. Just, I just thought this was interesting that uh, I saw this the other day, and I was like, "Hmm, I wonder if this is actually true." And from what you're saying, it's like, I don't even know if it is. I think as far as the consumer world, like people are like, I don't give a crap. I'm not putting an Intel product in my computer. Well, that's if they know about the issue, right? They well, I'd imagine. The They're still buying it up left and right. I would imagine if you pay attention to the space, you know about the issue. Whether you use Intel or not, you probably just know about the issue. Issue just because, I mean, it's if it's an, if it's an area that you you kind of just pay attention to you. I mean, you, you probably know about it. You might not know the, the depths of it because it, you know, if you're not using Intel, then you don't need to know the depths of it, but you've probably heard of it. 
So if someone if someone walks into Best Buy and they're like, "Hey, I want to buy a new gaming computer," and the sales rep there may be knowledgeable, they may not be, but at the end of the day, it's their job to sell stuff, right? Um, and they're like, "Hey, let me let me go ahead and and pick out one that fits in your budget." It's probably going to be an Intel, like. Even even of the people who are buying computers, not all of them are enthusiasts. Not all of them care enough to know. They just want to know that it's going to run what they want to run. If if I ever had some, like, okay, so let me tell you how this would go. If I walked in, I said, hey, I need a gaming rig. And the guy sold me a defective piece of crap that he knew was a defective piece of crap. Like, there's lawsuits that can be brought up at that point in time. Yeah, the lemon law. Yeah. I, they're okay. I, I mean, I would agree that Best Buy's got product to sell and they have salespeople that are there to sell stuff, but you also don't want to be selling defective pieces of crap. I mean, not unless this, I mean, this, obviously this, this software fix fixes the issue. Then obviously you're probably getting it on all the computers. That way it's not an issue. But that's if it works. And we'll find out probably here over the next month as people uh, probably test this, right? Because they, they, I mean, they said that before people come out, like within a couple of weeks, said, nope, that did not fix crap. <laughs> well, whenever that was, like two, three months ago, mm-hmm. three, three months back, whenever that was. So, yeah, I mean, it might it, take another month. It is but... interesting that they provided a root cause to it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, this one, if... this one was a much more specific, like, hey, this was the answer. It was too high voltage on whatever socket, you know, whatever it was. When this all first came out, um, Intel initially tried to place the blame on the motherboard makers. And right. that did not work for them. People proved that it was a problem with the chips themselves. And ever since then, the motherboard makers have kind of gotten a pass. Because as soon as you bring up the motherboard manufacturers into it. They're like, no, 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 it's a problem with the chips, which it is, but also like you, you've got Intel trying to root cause stuff when there's, you know, six, ten different motherboard manufacturers that are that are all have different models and different power voltages and all that sort of thing with these chips, and so. I don't think it's just an Intel issue, but I think that ever since they disproved that the motherboards weren't the only reason that it's happening, the motherboard manufacturers have gotten a pass. And um, I don't know that that's a good thing. Well, if if you can only fix one problem at a time, and if the chips, if it's across all the different motherboard manufacturers, then it's not just a motherboard manufacturing problem. And that was what, you know, a lot of the testers were saying. It's like, it's, this is happening across all my motherboards. It's like, there might be some jacked up motherboards out there, but you don't know that because the chips were faulty and the chips were faulty across all of them, all the motherboards. So, so do you remember that guy that gamers Nexus was interviewing, uh, level one techs, Wendell from level one techs? Yeah. Yeah. He's actually done more research into it recently. Okay. And he said that you're seeing different failure rates in different workloads. So okay. people that had different servers that they rented for crypto mining had a much, much lower failure rate. And it's because the voltages weren't as variable. It wouldn't be like it'd spin up to start one process and then spin down and blah, blah, blah. Because they were crypto mining on the chips, basically the processors were always at 100%. Hmm. And so because the voltages were always kept high. Constant. It was it always was constant. Constant. Yeah. And it was steady. They weren't, the chips weren't failing. Hmm. Interesting. And there's this whole, I forget what the technical term is, but they call it a pipeline, right? And an instruction pipeline. And so basically you have this stage where the you know you're you're trying to execute commands your processor cues these things up in a line and say you're number one you're number two you're number three and so 
depending on where something is in that line, it may require more or less voltage. And he was saying that, you know, you, the processor would spin up to give the voltage, and they'd be like, oh, wait, we're waiting for a second. I can drop the voltage back down, and then by the time the workload hits, you'd be trying to do this crazy amount of work with not enough voltage, and he thinks that's where the damage was coming from. But it's it's happening so fast, it's like millions and millions of times a second this is happening. And so in things that have a sustained workload, like crypto farming, right. you're not seeing that type of damage, but in things that fluctuate a lot, like gaming or whatever, you see you know, a much more, a much more varied amount of failures. Right. Uh, I mean, it makes sense, but that's interesting. I think Intel could actually be the first in a larger problem with this because across the board, the last couple of years, we've been seeing more manufacturers like with GPUs, especially push the power limits on their cards. So like, you know, mm -hmm. when the 10 series came out, the NVIDIA like GeForce 1070, you only need a 500 watt power supply. And nowadays they're saying, oh, well, you, you know, you need an 850 watt power supply minimum. And if you want to be comfortable with headroom to run all your other accessories in your case or whatever, you probably need at least a thousand kind of thing. Right. And so this could be the first group of products and a much larger trend across the board that has these types of issues. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's just, as far as like this fix, I mean, it's going to take probably about at least a couple of weeks to probably really see if it's, it's fixed, maybe even a month. But yeah. If, uh, I'd say if you got an Intel chip out there, you want to get this update and it really sucks for all those people that um you know their cpus went got jacked up before i mean it suck it sucks <laughs> i mean i don't know like are you able to turn it in for a refund like was it under warranty i believe for the 13th and 14th gen the intel is is issuing stuff yeah, okay um you have to send it in for rma but eventually oh. but the thing is if you're sending in your processor for rma you literally have a two thousand dollar paperweight sitting on yeah your i was saying you have you got nothing in it you know so and how long does the rma take i, I don't know yeah a couple Depends weeks whenever they get to it yeah could for how weeks, however long be. the backlog is could take a little while yeah. well hopefully it's done hopefully it's over with dad's gonna be building intel chips Computers going forward? Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> I, I just paid like $300 for a sideways upgrade in my main gaming PC to get on the Ryzen platform to get away from this issue. Oh, you did? You didn't? You did go lateral? Okay. Yeah, yeah so in my other PC... You, like you, just, you had to swap computer, out your motherboard, right? And motherboard processor proce and RAM. And, and what? RAM? And RAM, yeah. Oh, okay. And fun story, I ordered a 32 gig kit on Amazon, and they accidentally sent me a 96 gig kit. So my gaming computer is just a crazy amount of my memory for no reason. That's that's awesome though. I mean, good for you. My wife was like, "You need to send it back. It's not the right product." I was like, "Bank error in my favor." Yeah, you never gave it back in in Monopoly. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you you remember that tax error in Monopoly? Tax error? Yeah, like, uh, oh, no, I guess it was just it was, bank error. It was bank error in your and then, favor. And then tax refund. And, I think it was, and then tax refund, yeah. Can you imagine ever getting a tax error? Hey, you know, we're the IRS. We screwed up. What? No way. All right, dude. There. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we never have to talk about Intel chips this extensively ever again. <laughs>